Switch that on first and then we'll try that again. <laughs> Excellent. First technical issue. Anyway, hello everybody. Welcome. Uh, this is now, uh, we are now live and I've switched the mics on. Uh, and ordinarily, this is a Sonic Lab presentation type thing. We'd be doing this live in the studio uh, where, because Jackson from Modal Electronics is just down the road normally. How are you doing, Jackson? Very well, thank you. How are you? I'm good, yes. Uh, and, and, the reason we're here is because uh, Modal Electronics, uh, the, the Argon 8, which we've seen uh, well in several iterations now, we've got, not only have we got the uh, the regular Argon 8, we've got the Argon 8X and the Argon 8M, uh, which I've actually got an Argon 8M on the be test bench just here, which was sent just so I could have a look. And that's with, I was just going to hook it up with the MPE. But there's a brand new OS. This is kind of a big deal for you guys, isn't it? It's basically a whole bunch of new features, quite a lot of big capabilities, right? That's right, sorry, Nick, just give me a second. One second there. Okay, yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, we're looking at, um, so all the new features in firmware 2.0, so I just had a bit of loopback audio there. Uh, okay. Um, so we've got quite a lot of new features baked into the firmware now, and we've basically been fielding all of the kind of, um, you know, responses that we get from the YouTube videos and from our support inbox and stuff to implement as many of those kind of popular feature requests as we can um so yeah well, so I mean, I reviewed the uh, I reviewed the Argon 8. Uh, as a, basically, for those of you who don't know, eight voice digital wavetable synthesis with some really interesting features, kind of similar in many ways to. That, I mean, there are similarities to the Craft Engine, but it's way more advanced than that, right? Yeah, that's right. So I mean, kind of building on the technology that came with Sculpt and Craft, um, we kind of arrive at the Argon family, and you'll find a lot of the similar features, especially with Craft Synth 2, being that that was table synth as well. You'll find a lot of those similar features here, but with Argon, we kind of extended even beyond the capabilities that you had with Craft Synth, so a much more um, capable sort of um, engine than than that one was. Excellent. And I mean, just a quick look, that's the Argon 8M, which is the desktop version. I, what, what, uh, what one are you rocking today then, uh, uh, <laughs> Jackson? Ah, actually, there we I'm go. I'm surrounded your third. by all three of them, actually. I've got, um, I've got an M in front of me, but we're going to be looking at this, at this um, just, the just the original. Oh, when you do that, there's some audio Argon coming through. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Hold on. How's that? We'll I, uh, yeah, that seems better. Okay. Better, okay. Um, so yeah, I've got the original 8 here, and then to my right I also have an 8X just out of shot. But yeah, we'll concentrate on the uh, 37 key for today. So there's new new features. I mean, I guess the bullet points are, you know, well, does this mean all ones that are shipping will now have the OS 2.0 on it? Is it a user upgradable thing? I mean, how does that all work? Yeah, I mean, obviously, um, the new ones that get printed from, from now will, will have 2.0 um, on them. Um, headline features uh, so we have selectable envelope curves we've got new delay modes we have a, a really big expansion to the sequencer in the form of a step sequencer we've got all that parameter locking style automation um, we have MPE and then we've done some improvements to uh, the kind of average output level patch gain and signal to noise ratio so that you can kind of boost it a bit more and that kind of is the helicopter view of the the, the new features basically right um, so so uh, well i i guess um it would be probably pretty cool have, have you got anything to just to play us initially that's got a kind of uh, this is what it can sound like folks <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. that's not a stereo let me just get some uh there we go can we have a look at the overhead shot while you do that let me just swap you over so let's get a bit of that width. Let's go for some. 
some more. So we've got all these new MP patches here. So there's another hundred patches and there's some effects and sequences that will be joining those. And there's 50 or so MP patches in there. And then another 50, which will concentrate on the new delay types, the new curves for the envelopes and all that sort of stuff. So there's a good sort of uh, spread of things that you can check through. And you can grab those bits off our website now. Um, they're up on the downloads page for uh, any of the Argonate products. Um, so that'd be a good thing to check if you want to have a look through these bits here. That's right here. I've got it's it. Uh, yeah, I've Wago in the chat room just yeah. says I actually just upgraded to 2.9. and it's just a case of, of connecting the mobile app and ask you to before you uh, to update before you could use it. That's it. So it's pretty yeah, straightforward. Super simple. Super simple. Yeah. Um, okay. So um, now, right? There's there's comments flying past. Um, uh, one of them is, let me just get this one in, this is uh, Nabuka says, does it have uh, stereo spread like the craft? This is really not an OS2 question, but I guess it's uh, a question. If you could come back to your headshot, that would be handy. I know it's a, 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 this video switching malarkey is different for you, is new for, new for you. <laughs> um, it's actually different to the craft in that it is stereo on the output. Obviously the crafts were mono. Um, we do have the same spread function, uh, which you can access on Craft Synth 2.0 on Sculpt on any of the Argons as well. So you have this spread function, but we also have uh, drift and width functions, which really, like when you're playing with stack modes or when you're playing with Unison, uh, really start to open up the kind of weirdness, um, stereo-wise especially. Um, so yes, it does have the same spread, but it has even greater stereo capabilities. Right, okay, cool. Just another quick question. I wasn't expecting quite so many. I have the AX on order. Any ideas when they will be shipping? I know I'm throwing these at you a bit un, uh, unprepared there, Jackson. So that's from Solution. Bank. really depends where they're from. I mean, if, right. if they want to email us, support at Mode Electronics, uh, tell us where they're from and we can give them some more information. Okay, brilliant. Well, thanks for that. Okay, so, um, I mean, in the video that you shot, because uh, when we started doing this, we shot a video uh, in advance because we weren't sure we were going to have all of this tech in place, but Jackson's worked really hard to bring it, it, it to reality. So you started off by showing that there are new envelope modes, and what, what exactly do those have to offer? So we started off and we just had an exponential envelope um, to begin with and we've added seven new types. Uh, so this kind of comes in the shape of three new curves. So what we have is the original Expo, which is kind of well suited for everything bread and butter sounds. We've introduced a snappy envelope for any sort of percussive transient material. There's a soft envelope, which obviously is kind of going to be suited for pads, ambient material and then there's a linear one which I guess you could use for modulations this sort of stuff and then we've implemented um, long variations of each of those types so you get seven extra to choose from uh, along with the original and they show up presumably they show up in the app as well I think have you got a screen grab of the app as well that uh... yeah so you can you can choose them here just as easily as you could choose them from uh, the synth itself but if you come and look at any of the envelope sections like you can see here we have this drop down menu where you can just select any of them so we can go and for example for this one let's choose snappy for snappy long for these guys here i'll just actually give that a release it would make more sense right there we go So that gives you a snappy so, decay, but a longer release, right? Yeah, so it's changing kind of the curves of the actual um, envelope shape. So with the snappy one, you get a little bit more of a kind of ramp into the attacks and a ramp out of the decays. Right. Um, so it's just selecting slightly different combinations of those that are best suited for different types of sounds. Um, so yeah, there's a lot kind of a lot of stuff to explore there, especially with um, if you're into like ambient or drone things, this is kind of getting to perfect territory because, you know, it's like double the available time that we had before. So, I can't. Yeah. Do they the, do the envelopes loop? I can't remember if they loop because that would make quite a lot of difference if uh, with those new curves. Yeah, no, they're not looping envelopes. Um, that is uh, an interesting yeah thing to raise, but no, just okay. ADSRs. Fair enough. Um, so as well as the envelopes, obviously, I mean, I guess, so what happens, the, the patch compatibility, presumably, because there's a default mode, it, it, it comes, you know, the, the patches that you've got already in pre-OS uh, 2.0 would actually be compatible across, yeah? 
completely compatible and it's all automagical the process once you update um the update process does all of the conversion for you so yeah okay um so uh, yeah. I, I mean there's there's a whole bunch of other so what what what's the next in the list of stuff that uh, you want to demonstrate to us so we've got chord inversions which i didn't mention the headlines there i'm just going to pick a different um patch something that we can actually hear this a little bit clearer on um so what this is is basically live chord inversions and we have kind of some really typical um, odd and even conversions and then at the end of the list we have these shuffle conversions and these are super super interesting is where you kind of split um, so for those of you who don't know what chord inversions are it's where you take your chord shape and you move one of the notes up an octave and sequentially move all the other notes up an octave to get different inversions um, but we have a shuffle modes or th there's four shuffle modes where it will do every other and it'll start to move them in odd pieces like this which is really really beautiful i'm just going to find a nice polyphonic patch well, let's have a look at the unit while you do on. that before you start playing so yeah i've just chosen a patch here let me just get some audio so i can hear you So that takes the actual voicing of that you're playing and reorders the notes that you've played in via MIDI. Is that what is that correct, or is it in the actual um, the the the, the, the uh, intervals in the oscillators themselves? It's in the engine and it is tied to oscillators. Yeah, so it's okay. reassigning and spreading them over. Where it gets really interesting, like I said before, is where you hear these shuffle modes. So we come to the end and we get these. <laughs> it's spreading them can, and can you modulate that so could so could you have dynamic uh, inversions I mean not from CC's at the moment I think it's on an RPN but you can do it with your hand okay all right I guess uh, as a modulation destination that'd be kind of interesting uh, in the in the future perhaps I mean who knows I mean I guess you just got to 2.0 so why not start planning the next OS right <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> so um, just to just to clarify so basically when you're playing a chord it, it, is it to do with the spread of the oscillators that's creating the inversion or is it to do with the notes you're playing in a say if you're playing a three note chord is it actually reordering the notes that you're playing in? That's what I was trying to get to the bottom of. I mean, yeah, essentially it is. Ah, okay. So it's just reordering the, yeah. So okay. you're, you're moving, you're moving sort of all of them at once. I got you. Well, it look, I mean, just looking at that, it looks like it needs to be modulated because you're modulating it by by hand, and that's your what your your natural kind of uh, inclination seems to be. So uh, put it on the list, guys. <laughs> yeah. So um, so I mean, we got that's one of those things. Actually, I think um, you probably will be able to do it in the animator at some point. It's just um, hooking those things up. Uh, there was another. There was another question that came in. Uh, does the sound parameter rev? This is again a bit, a bit sort of not necessarily sequential. Sound source says, does the parameter resolution of 128 steps affect affect how smooth things are changed? I.e., is it interpolated? Good question. I can't actually answer that myself. I'd have to ask one of the devs. Okay. All right. Well, fair enough. Um, that's fair enough. It, it interpolated is in slewed. If 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 that's what they mean, then yeah, it's slewed a little bit. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, I guess that. I mean, because I guess you could you slew in the in some sequences as well. Um, so, all right. So we've done uh, the uh, envelopes. We've done the chord inversions. Uh, did you mention that there were some new effects Delay. algorithms as well? Delay. Yes. Yeah, I see a smile on your face for this. Yes. Yeah, so, what we've done is um, added two extra delay types. So we've added on top and we've recategorized the original delay so the original delay is now color and we've also added a clean delay and then a long delay and the long delay is the same as the clean delay but four times the um, available delay time ah, so okay. just have a little look at those now let me just swap over here um, 
So if I just come over to the effects here, let's choose, uh, let's go for an init patch quickly and um, we'll just put the stereo delay on here and I'll just give you a sine wave. Okay, so we have this original color. which kind of saturates and smears the tails a little bit as um, they feed back. And then we can move here in the FX tabs. You can see we have all these tabs. Oh, in show, us the, yeah, show us the screen because so we're, like, we're seeing... Oh, I can't see it yet. Yeah. Yeah. So we have all these tabs here where you can get access to the different functions. And if we go to the FX tab, you can set up all of these things here. And you see we have this function here, color, and that is the delay mode. So we can change it to clean or long. So if I change it to clean, we have like a more pristine delay. It doesn't have the same saturation or kind of smearing of the feedback tails. And then you have the long, which is just four times the clean delay. Right, so that sounds Long quite guy. clean, yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, right, so we're, we're just listening to the delay signal at the moment, which is why it's going right. Why it seems like it's out of sync, but that is that. Are we listening to the fully wet? Is yeah. that right? Ah, okay, I got you. So that was that's it, sorry. But we, but so what you've got there is a is a much longer. What what does it go up to? That sounds like four or five seconds at least. Over, yeah, I think. Um, I haven't got the exact time, so it would be probably around twenty or over twenty seconds. Right. Okay. Something like this. Uh, just got another question coming in. Uh, Rancy says, "Is there any major controls missing off the module version?" Uh, Wagyu, he's asking Wagyu because Wagyu's got one, <laughs> but you'll know as well, I imagine. Yeah, there's no controls missing. There's just functions that have moved. So what we've done with this guy is we've moved some of the button functions onto uh, encoders. So you can now have these push encoders. Um, so it's, it's mainly just a migration of functions onto different encoders if that makes sense. Um, yeah. If you go to the website and you get the, the manual, you've got an entire UI combinations list for specifically for. That is a very cute. Yeah, I mean, we've got, I've got them. I've got that here, actually. In fact, I'm just running a sequence on it. I'm going to open that up so you can hear what. This is just running a very slow sequence with what sounds like some of that lovely stereo delay. You see the light underneath it. That's the RetroKit RK006, which I was trying to plug in the MPE source, but my Roly keyboard needs charging up. Oh, isn't that charming? That's more my, that's my, my sort of ambient na na nature. I mean, that's the thing. Have there been any other uh, um, changes to the, have, have you changed any of the reverb parameters or have you concentrated mostly on the delays for this OS update? Well, I mean, the whole sort of effects engine has come up in resolution actually, so everything is, um, overall sounding better i guess you could say right um but not specifically the delays are the only things that we've uh, made a, a bigger sort of change to um at this point right okay. that's not to say that we're not looking at you know new effects and things that's something we're constantly looking at and so i mean i guess this towards. this this thing really kind of brings up because you see this with a lot of digital synthesizers or, or, or the new breed of digital synthesizers you know how much spare capacity do you build in the dsp because obviously you don't want to over qualify something and then find you're spending too much on the on the build court uh, costs but you want to have that capacity so how much of this is actually sort of just re-engineering uh, the code so it's more efficient to give you more capacity and how much is spare capacity that's completely 100% what it is really because when we first start with these things you know it's um, it's kind of a whittling down process until you have this kind of final form that you can then build upon mm. so you know the first image when when I first came to see you with the prototypes of the 37 when it was still you know a different color and uh, sort of handmade over here um, it's still the same kind of um, 
origin but yeah obviously we've started to build on that gold code basically uh, and it is just a lot of optimization to see how much extra stuff we can fit in because you know when it comes to things like extra filters or um, effects and stuff it's something that we'd love to do and obviously we have designs for filters and we have designs for effects and all sorts of things like this but it is about finding the you know the power and the extra cycles to do that stuff so yeah 100 percent about kind of optimizing what we have to make room for improvement interesting uh we've got another question here uh which is a fair question actually this is uh, redneck discotech great handle there can you run audio through it and utilize the effects uh so because some synths allow you to just bypass the vcas and the envelopes and just go straight in and, and access can you do that with this yeah so these back panels are all the same um connections for each of the units you see on i can't read backwards but i think this guy here we have a 3.5 stereo audio in yeah. and that'll come in post filter and you can send it through the effects or you can choose to send it directly to the output if you want to use it as a mixer stage um, nice one. so yeah you have the option to use the effects with audio in that's real i think that's really useful in fact now i come to mention it i think i used it that way with a uh i did a friday fun jam with the argon 8 yeah synth where i was doing that i can't remember what i was putting through it but i, I think i was utilizing the effects there Beringer, wasn't it it might have been a neutron. Yeah, I think the neutron was just in drone mm -hmm. mode and I was just feeding it through. And yeah, it I think it was just the effects. I mean, that's the thing with wavetable stuff. I mean, I guess that one of the questions that I'll probably ask is uh, user wavetables, isn't it? I mean, that's the thing that's because I think there was some talk at the beginning. And I'm not, I'm not sure where we are with this, but there was some talk at the beginning of the possibility of having user wavetables. Is there something that, that might come along? Because it's kind of a complicated thing to achieve to the end user, I think. It's a really complicated thing for a number of reasons. Um, and I think there is an elegant way you can offer that, but I think um, implementing it with Argon as it is, is probably too problematic for um, just the amount of kind of, um, yeah, the, just the overhaul that would have to happen. And, you know, I think it's already been really carefully curated uh, the, the wavetables are ready to sound good with each other and if we could put things in you know i see i see um other synthesizers putting in the option to do this uh, and, it, and it's really nice but i also think it kind of detracts from the original charm of, of the synth because you can you know you can really just go off down a, a completely different path we could just fill it with noise if we wanted to which is great but i think it also you know for me it det detracts a little bit for that I suppose the other thing is, is you need some space, don't you? You need some actually spare room to be able, because if you replace wavetables, then loads of patches aren't going to work because they're going to be refer referencing the wrong, <laughs> the wrong waves. So it would be, so you need to have that spare RAM or whatever it is that they would sit in, I suppose. There's a huge amount of stuff that would have to change if, if we wanted to do that. And I just think there's probably a, for us, there's probably a better product for us to showcase that with. Right. Um, well, that's an intriguing. That's an intriguing answer. I'll leave that hanging in the air there. Um, so perhaps what we could have you got some other patches that you've kind of got because you must have been working with this a little while. It'd be good to hear some more stuff. I think. Let's do it. I've got patches falling out my ears, Nick. It's not a good time <laughs> for the patches. Well, that's nice. Is that using any specific OS2? Because you said that there was actually some uh, 100 new patches. Obviously, we haven't even got to the MPE yet, but I just thought it'd be good to have a couple more audio examples. Anything else you got? Yeah, the, uh, all of these patches are showcasing 2.0 2 features. So this one has soft long envelopes in it. If I just flip over to the um, mode light window for you here. So we've got the soft long envelopes. We also have I'll be using the color delay on this one. So all of these patches here, if you just look in my bank here, I've got them all loaded from 300. We have the 50 MPE ones here, but they all have um, something of 2.0 to show off in them. So yeah, let's see what we can go for here. Let's find something. This one's a nice one. What's interesting? Is that some bit crushing going on there? Super yeah. low fi yeah, so we've got this lo-fi effect here, which is sample rate reduction and right. bit crushing and a little bit of noise as well, but that's not employed. 
Um, let's just grab something. Uh, maybe we'll get this guy. Some organ-like, it's interesting. Yeah, so that's just making use of the tremolo and the rotary effects, um, or actually just the rotary in this one, and maybe an LFO. So uh, just yeah. just while we're talking, while we're looking at the app, is the app because the app is mm -hmm. uh, you're running that on desktop, presumably. What does it run on? What OS is and what kind of platforms does the app run on? So the app actually will run on iOS, on Android, Mac, and um, Windows. Uh, you can find the kind of details of which OSs or which versions it, it will support on the website. But we also had recently a guy who's running Linux who said he had success um, running the app on Linux as well. Not that we can officially support it, but it's nice to know that it works. So all platforms, tablets, phones, computers, yeah. Right. And um, obviously, you know, there's, there's actually quite a lot of things coming up in the chat room, uh, which are sort of where, where can I get it? Where's well, out of stock here? I mean, obviously, at the moment, you know, distribution is an issue. I mean, and that's not just for modal, it's just globally because the way things are. Yeah. But I mean, are you are you sorted internationally? I mean, once it's all once the machinery is all running smoothly again, can people kind of pretty much get it from all major retailers? I mean, where? Yeah, they can, and actually, we're starting to see those uh, wheels turn a bit, uh, a bit more consistently now. Um, so they will be on their way out, kind of um, imminently. I know that the the M's I think have got, have gone out quite recently. Um, X is on the way as well. So it, it's you know the same situation that everybody's in, unfortunately. So yeah, um, of course. But yeah, we're getting good news back. So. Okay, um, so we've looked at maybe a couple more patches, and then we can have a look at some MPE business uh, as well, if that's possible. Yeah, let's do it. Oh, interesting. Got an overhead shot for me there. Trancy side chaining. That's very delicate. Lovely. Maybe we'll look at some of the um, sequence stuff as well, just quickly. Oh, yes, because there's sequencer updates, aren't there? Right. So I've got something already in here. So you can see in the sequencer page, we have um, this new step sequencer here, which is where all that's programmed into. Ah, that's a lot and of steps. This is where you can. That's a lot, yeah. So it's a 512 note, and I think it'll go for, oh, I think 64 for the step sequencer and 32 for the arp seek. But you can also look here at all of the animations. So this is the animator within the step sequencer. It's slightly different for the real time mode and for the step sequencer mode, obviously, because we parameter lock. Um, with the real time mode, for example, you would just see um, kind of drawable notes much more like a DAW automation. Um, but this is really handy because we have, you know, a piano roll that we can very, very quickly jump into and edit notes here. And there's a lot of, uh, you know, hidden power in this in terms of the different playback modes. You know, we have like gate triggers, um, all sorts of stuff that you can do there, which is really, really, really fun once you get down to it. Ah, so you can do the thing where uh, it, it plays when you're when your fingers on the on the on the note, or it just cycle, it, it mm -hmm. advances steps, or are those the sort of modes that you were talking about. Yeah, let me just see if I can grab one of these patches for you that actually uses it. Okay, Seinfeld. We so we have Let's a go. little <laughs> cheesy bass patch here for all you Seinfeld lovers. <laughs> So I'm just going to do this. It's a bit hard because I'm not hearing what's
what's actually coming through, but you get the idea. Ah, uh, right. And then, so yes, you're triggering each step, or you, but you can, you could, you could actually kind of uh, ratchet it effectively just by transpose. kind of s- speeding through and transpose. Okay, interesting. Yeah, so that one's a gate transpose. There's a straight gate mode where it doesn't matter what the MIDI is, it will just um, use incoming MIDI to trigger the next step. And then we also have gate through, which will pass whatever MIDI you're playing, as well as advancing steps. So you can almost play along with the sequencer, which gets really interesting if you're using the arpeggiator, because it means you can use the arpeggiator to drive the sequencer and just leave them both interacting with each other. Odd step lengths, all this sort of stuff starts to become much more... um, enjoyable yeah when you're trying to explore things you can get some really really bizarre stuff happening so and with the with the actual uh, parameter lock steps i mean does that slew between because obviously you can have quite radical steps and depending on the resolution can you get those to sort of slew so you get a bit more of a nice transition there's no option for that at the moment um this is something we kind of initially when this was in its infancy we were talking about how this has to be handled and i think it's slightly slewed in between steps at the moment just to kind of stop any really aggressive um snaps into place or anything right okay um, all right yeah, yeah there's I, no there's no uh, option to kind of tailor smoothing that. okay uh john from the uk i suspect is john as in your sales director uh, john here from the uk 37 and the m version JB. are already available across the uk across the world now so that's there you go so they're obviously in the channels Good i guess from the, john the uh, the desktop or the M is the one that's going to be uh, uh, oh no the M is going the X is going to be the one that's probably taking a little bit longer. Have they, have they, there was another question actually. Are they are they for tar keybeds in the uh, the main things? Yes. Yeah, they're for tar TP nine S. Yeah, so it's kind of the, the yeah. And they've got uh, just to just nice to clarify, one. they they've got uh, aftertouch though not polyphonic aftertouch, which might be a They're nice after link. touch enabled, yeah. It's not polyphonic aftertouch, but these are you know really beautiful keybeds that you'll find in you know yeah. a lot of high end products. So I can attest um, to that. I mean, I reviewed the eight and it did feel really nice. The build quality again, once again, the build quality is really nice. So um, MPE, this is a big deal, right? That is a big deal because we got eight voices and we can uh, we can get that going, right? Eight voices and a crazy, crazy engine to play with as well. So, yeah, it's it was a, it was a long slog, I think, for the developers to actually get this one um, up and running. But it was one of those things I think we had um, on our checklist from the very early days because you know, with the 002 being one of the first few to kind of support MP there as well, it was always a bit of a um, a fascination for us and something we're always interested in playing with. So when it came to Argon, I think it was the logical decision that we want to try and implement MPE. And, um, so uh, yeah, I, I know because you, you do some MPE demo in the video that you shot for us. Are you set up to be able to show us some MPE live and direct? And how have, what, have you, what are you yeah, using? Just pull this. I have a Seaboard just out of shot here. Um, I've got a... Uh, it is connected up. Let me just get my audio monitoring on. So yeah, okay. I have a uh, seaboard just out of shot, which I can play with. And um, I'm just going to roll back through to some of the MP patches here. So, let's start at the start. So presumably, I, I mean, this is going through, it's not got host mode, so it has to go through a keyboard. Uh, uh, through a, a DAW of some kind or something which has a host mode, a l- much like what I was trying to do here with the RetroKits RK006, which apparently will do that. So I would plug the Seaboard into one of the USB uh, slots and then mm. the Argon 8 into the other. Uh, sadly, I couldn't get my Roly working in time for, to, to link that up. So, it do- But it doesn't have a host I mean, mode, just, but if you I'll have show something you, with I'll a host show you mode... i what I use now, actually. Okay. I use a thing uh, called MIDI Patch Bay, which um, will allow you to kind of set up many different connections between things that are on your system so if you look maybe i can do this let's hope this works all right there you go oh so you, so you just, just basically everything to everything well. yeah and that's just usb it, in yeah. to usb out essentially yeah yeah exactly well let's so have a go uh, let's uh, let, uh, 
if you can play a couple, I, if uh, there's also uh, so Synth Anatomy did a nice demo where he's doing lots of MPE stuff. He was using yeah, it by an did. iPad. There's some really nice patches in there. So high bar being set there, Jackson. And a very cool. As well. Just wondering what's going on. I'm just going to open up dashboard and check I'm on the right mode. Oh uh, yeah, because well, you have to be in the right mode. So do you have to set the mode? Uh, does the modal have to be the argonate have to be in MPE mode to, to you know is there a separate mode for MPE I suppose yeah let me show you that now so we have in the application if you come into the settings page here you have uh, the ability to scroll through settings pages and you can go and turn MPE mode on here and set any of the settings up there so really really quick and easy to flip in and out of MPE mode if that's for you so yeah I'm just wondering what's Some very bizarre happenings. Right, okay. Well, maybe um, what I just could give do. Give me a minute with it. Yeah, no problem. I'll tell you what I'm going to do is I will. I have actually got. If I bring the video. Has up, been for us to extend I'm the I'm scroll of forward the to the point. point. Up there. We have, have extended a move and we have because it's something that uh, we know to compete the technology as far as what we can do with it. Let's have some over and also a nice Argon 8, Argon 8, the, ro the Rolly dashboard. So there's an Argon Lab uh, 2.0 and there's a whole bunch. There's 50 MP patches that I've supplied I'm there. I'm trying to get the MPE. So Here we go. wraps it up so we talk about right i hope i've managed to uh, cover up some of the uh, your your finagling around there with the uh, mpe set up your end i know um it's worth mentioning actually at this point uh, because uh, ultimately you know this is any kind of computer any kind of multi-camera com streaming setup uh, particularly when you is going to tax your computer massively which is why we're seeing a little bit of uh, sync delay with uh, jackson's camera and things are creaking at the edges you'll have to get the boss to to plump for a, a brand new uh, super powered uh, video capable imac setup right <laughs> yes I can't. Well, um, yeah. I, I'll I'll I'll, I'll vouch that. for you there. So, um, how did we go? Have we got have we got anything lined up your end? Did you manage to get the MPE routing sorted out in your? I'm just getting a lot of latency through Soundflower, so it's actually quite difficult to. Um, yeah, I think that's probably really what's going on before it comes back again. Okay, well, maybe the thing to do is uh, is to well, let me see. I, I'll see if I can find uh, the. Um, the synth anatomy one because that is really good actually uh and th then we can then we'll be able to see yeah, a little Tom bit did a lovely job with that and uh, then we'll be able to see a little bit of how that was working i'm just going to load that up uh let me see uh so i mean outside of what's happening uh th th this is this is for available you launched last week right am, am i right in thinking last wednesday it was live yeah midday on wednesday it went live right and uh, so people could just pull it straight so down had, um so I'm just trying to do a search for this is the live production synth anatomy. So I'm just looking for that. I'm trying to find his video because it's uh, it's the one I'm trying to find. Where has he gone? I'm sure I saw it yesterday. Uh, ah, here we go. This is it. Let me see if I can find it here. So this is uh, uh, skip the ad. If I jump forward a bit, let me find. Now I need to set my output. I wasn't expecting this. There's some lovely patches, so you can really see. So he's using the, uh, I'm not sure what the app is there on uh, on the iPad, but it's just basically class compliant going into uh, the Argon 8. And flipping through. It's really nice for ambient stuff. I mean, the thing is with MPE is, and I don't, I th I don't think a lot of people kind of get that. When you play it, when you've got that pitch modulation, which you can sort of move around a little bit, it's actually quite 
liberated because you end up with these variations which tend to fall between the cracks because when we're working on the 12-tone scale, the, rel the relative, and, and those kind of 128 steps, you could kind of wiggle the difference between the chord notes and get these really interesting scenarios going on. So let me just have a play a little bit more of this. I hope Tom doesn't mind us uh, using some of his video. Uh, he is obviously, if you want to uh, check, synthanatomy.com uh, is where you can find a lot of this good stuff. Um, right, so, uh, so Jackson, is there any other stuff in there that we need to cover while we're, uh, while we're here, or have we pretty much got uh, covered all the new things? Well, one of the probably biggest requests that we had when we initially launched... Um, with the 37 was for improvements to the audio output level. Right. And um, what we've done to kind of address this is, um, I mean, it's it's really good because it's not just giving you one option that says, yes, it's louder. We have some really, really nice tailorable options. So we have included a new feature, which is called Gain Boost. Um, this will give you three different options to um, boost the overall output level of the synth engine. And then we have made improvements to the patch gain feature, which was something we implemented in 1.2, I think, which um, is basically a, a gain setting for the individual patch, so it's per patch uh, setting of gain before it goes into some dynamics processing on the output. So you could use the patch gain and also the gain boost, um, you could use both of them together to kind of drive into this uh, dynamics processing, um, which is really, really nice, actually. So it's really, almost really like a character. mastering stage, then, uh, limiter stage on the end kind of thing, right? Oh. Yeah, exactly. It's um, it's just got that kind of um, ability to glue things together. So especially with effects and things, or um, you know, if you've got something which is maybe a bit quieter, you can bring those up to level. But it as with effects tails and things, it's going to glue all that stuff together, which is really nice. And but we've also made uh, improvements to signal to noise ratio. So for anybody who is trying to, you know, gain that on their inputs, right, they're not going to have as much undesirable noise. The one thing I did notice is, I mean, this was the case when you go from sort of unison mode and you're spreading the oscillators, you get a gain, you get some gain change because you're sort of essentially uh, I guess, dropping the level of the individual components. Is that sort of evened up a little bit or is that still yeah. a thing? That... I mean, you're always going to get a little bit of that. I mean, I'm, with, yeah. with these things, it's kind of like how many voices, how many oscillators are allocated per voice and how many voices are you yeah. playing at the time. So if you're playing one note in mono, you're going to hear a difference when you swap into poly, of course, or into any of the stack modes because you've got less you know, oscillators allocated to that voice. So if you ended up playing eight notes in poly, you'd, you'd have a similar level. I think that's... Um, yeah. Right. Okay. I got you. Um, um, there's one more question that just came up. Uh, Martin uh, or Ma Martin? I, that sounds Dutch. Possibly. I am. Uh, is it possible to set the length of automation lanes independently? So you've got essentially uh, a polymetric, I guess. Although I'm not sure what you would do that with automation, but is it possible? Um. Uh, yeah, I know what he means. Um. Not currently. Um, because you set the length for the whole sequence. Right. That so uh, the, the the step length is equal to um, whatever you, or however many notes you've programmed in or whatever you've set the step length to within that step sequence. So um, just look, can we just have a look at the sequence? So can you say I only want 16 steps yeah. or can you just kind of go off into the distance or is it sort of, di does it dynamically work? So if you only play 16 notes in, it doesn't play to the end of... 512. <laughs> so you can see here the step step length on the left hand side here. We have the individual steps, but then we also have the how many steps are in the sequence. So you see as I drag it, it ungrays and grays out. And that goes all the way relevant. up to 512, right? Wow. 512 notes, 64 steps. So 512 notes is, um, to, to give some kind of um, background to this, I guess, it's worth saying that it's related to the real-time sequencer. So the real-time sequencer has a maximum amount of notes of 512 notes. Um, it can be, yeah, incredibly long, but implementing the step sequencer within the real-time sequencer, if that makes sense, um, 
we have slightly different kind of parameters available there, but okay. Um, yeah, it's a bit misle It's a bit of a misleading question, really. But yes, okay. you, can, you uh, um, can change all the steps and things here. Uh, another question from me, Rancy, uh, which is just uh, maybe you could just talk about it at least. Uh, I'd like to see the polychain feature. I didn't realise it had polychain, but so it's possible to polychain them. And how does that work? Does it just send all the parameters to the next one in the the line, or how does that? Yeah, exactly. So what happens is you would take the um, you you need a MIDI cable, and you would take the DIN out from your desired master to the DIN in of your desired slave. And then you would just boot up into a, a polychain mode. You can only polychain two, but any two are gone. So you could have an 8M and an 8X or two eights. Uh, you know, ah, so does things. it sort of disable the control panel of the slave and it just becomes yeah, the so your master, your slave control panel is disabled and the master control panel will update both units. And I suppose, could you bring the master stereo, the, the slave stereo back into yeah, the stereo exactly. so you end up with a... Ah, OK, so... You, Right, well, that's nice to know. Bingo. Yeah. Yeah. Jackson, thank you so much for this. I mean, I, I don't know if there's any more stuff you wanted to go through, but uh, I mean, it feels like we've covered quite a lot there, and hopefully we've answered some of your questions there in the uh, the chat rooms because we've got the IRC folks and the YouTube stream folks. Um, but I, I, I'll I'll just pass over to you in case there's anything else you wanted to add. Um, not a huge amount. I mean, that covers all of the topics. But yeah, I would just encourage people to go and get the update if they haven't already and go and download some of the new patches so they can have a play and um yeah just enjoy it i mean i think this is a really it's such a substantial update to something that was already quite powerful so there's a lot to um explore and play with there for for argonate owners excellent right okay well thank you very much indeed for that uh, what i might do is i might just uh open up the uh, the local argonate and uh, switch to uh this to play us out a little bit so you can just hear a little bit more patching without uh, having to uh, do much uh, but Jackson thank you so much for joining us it's been, it's been an education at least because we haven't, we haven't done one of these remotely before in real time a lot of the stuff that we've done before has been recorded so thanks for being a good sport uh, for joining us and it almost worked all perfectly so that's perfect 90% 90% <laughs> excellent right so that's it for this sort of lab uh, the, hopefully the chat will be archived so you can follow the stream again if you go to modalelectronics.com you can find out a bit more about uh, all of those units and the OS update and all of those things so in the meantime, we will see you all soon. Thank you very much for watching. That was the Sonic Lab special presentation with Mode Electronics. Uh, we will see you all in the not-too-distant future. See you later, folks. Bye-bye now.